Hi, my name's Charles Bear too, and I'm mostly known for doing crazy things with solo bass. YouTube is my main thing. I do a lot of stuff ranging from funk to hard rock, a little bit of metal. I've never heard these songs before. I'm interested to see what happens here. All right. <laughs> Let's hear it. Charles Bear too. Have you heard this before? I have not. Yes! <laughs> Strike one. I've been holding out so long. I've been sleeping all along. Lord, I miss you. I've been hanging on the phone. I've been sleeping all along. I won't kiss you. Charles, what are you doing right now? Are you writing something down? Are you... I'm getting some foam. Oh, some foam. Nice. Yeah. I like that. You saw that bridge coming from a mile away. Okay, what are your thoughts right now? You've never heard this song before. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the first thing I realized was that I'm gonna need to change the tone a bit. It's gonna need to have that old school thumpy muted sound. So that's why I got the foam pretty much straight Love away. It. So what I normally do with this type of thing is I put markers in logic. I like put the chord symbols in logic. Right. That, that's not gonna be possible here, but it is mostly the same chord progression a lot of the time. So are you trying to write a part? Are you trying to just groove along? Like what's, how are you thinking about it? Mostly I'm trying to get the main rhythmic pulse down. I find with songs like this, where there's a very strong rhythmic motif, like it's always a bit of a question of do I play that or do I play something that complements that? Because sure. sometimes it sounds really cool to just go with the main rhythm, but it can also actually make it groove less if everyone's playing the exact same rhythm. Sure. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out if this is one of those songs where I play the main rhythm everyone else is playing or if I play something around it. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's your choice. Yeah. It's your choice. Yeah, honestly, I'm probably just going to keep playing this over and over again. Oh yeah, catching the end of the bridge. Yep. I also just have to say, I love that you're not just like, ah, it's a simple thing, whatever, like fire me up. I love that you're like, ah, I could either do this rhythmic motif or I could do this kind of thing. Like yeah. it, it, it makes me love you even more, Charles. <laughs> if you're interested in learning Charles' version of Miss You, and of course the original Bill Wyman bass line, we have a link in the description to free tab and notation. Go grab it. When you get songs to do as sessions, do you tend to like hang with them a long time before you commit to like laying down a part, do you play stuff over and over and try to like really get inside of it? Yeah, often I do. Cause basically by the time I actually record, I don't want it to sound like I'm playing it for the first time. It's like, I want to pick up on all of these things that the other instruments are doing 
and I want to have tried out a few different options. So yes. that I, and sometimes I record a few different options too, so that sure. whoever I'm recording for has different things they can work with. It's like you don't know what works best until you've tried out a few things. Well, don't worry. Just the entirety of the internet will be judging you. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're no stranger to that. No, that, that's that's how it is all the time. So it's all That's good. old hat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like now you're in tasteful, like session guy mode. Yeah. But also feel free to like, if you were playing this in your band, would there be a moment that you would do something that would maybe break out of that kind of mindset of like, oh, just support, right? Yeah. Like right now you're thinking about it so supportively, which is awesome. Yeah. And then could you take it to another place? I mean, that's of course up to you, but you have free reign. Yeah. All right. Well, just see what happens. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Play that melody. Riding it into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, oh, so good. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, man. Okay. Before we tell you who it is, I wonder, like, what do you feel like was challenging about that? What, what did you like? What did you not like? What are your takeaways from yeah. playing that song? It's funny because sometimes it's more challenging when there's 
like fewer chord progressions. When there's fewer chords, it means that a lot more is riding on your kind of baseline writing ability. It's funny because right. if there's like a different chord every beat, you know, taking an extreme example, then it's like half the baseline is already written for you because you're probably mm -hmm. wanting to play the roots of all those chords, which means that like they've already written like most of the baseline. But if it's like <laughs> eight bars of just one chord, I mean, unless you're just <laughs> right. going to be playing A the whole time or whatever the root note happens to be, it's yes. like you've got yes. to fill in a lot of that stuff. So that's the funny thing is it's like sometimes the simplest stuff is actually like weirdly deceptively difficult. Uh, Cause structurally it wasn't too complicated either. It's like, you've basically just got a minor to D most of the time. And then that bridge comes along. And actually so often when you're like about to go into the bridge, the drummer will start opening up the hi-hat. Uh, and that's exactly what happened in this song. It's like, he's got a very tight hi-hat most of the time, but then you hear him start going like, oh. it's like, he's leading you into that bridge. So yes. well, it's no surprise. This is uh, a guy on drums considered to be one of the greatest, like simple pocket players in rock and roll history. All right. Do you want to take a guess as to what band this is? As you were listening, did you have any, were you like, oh, okay, I think I know. Or do you, are you still like clueless about who this might be? I'm pretty clueless to be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not sure who this is. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so the band is the Rolling Stones. Ah, uh, okay. Nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. Classic rock band with the great Bill Wyman on bass. So let's check out this tune and let's see how close you got. Yeah. And, uh, and see what you think. I've been hanging out so long. I've been sleeping all alone. Charles, I loved that you grabbed the melody. Oh, uh, thanks. Da -da 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 -da. I loved that. Wyman on some of those off beats, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's got it like very disco-y. Yeah, right, right. But you got that, you got that octave thing as it rolled along, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you started to do that octave thing. I was like, yeah. damn. <laughs> and it looks like also in the video, he's playing with a pick too, which is interesting. Right. Is there foam? Is there foam? I love though that you put foam in it. Yes, we do. <laughs> I love in this down moment too that you took some liberties up and kind of took like melodic up high moments. Bill not joining in the gang vocal party, holding it down <laughs> in the back. <laughs> like a good bass player should. Yeah, we haven't got time for messing around like that. <laughs> Damn right. I like a lot of the choices you made, Charles. Like you heard those climbs, you did some disco octaves but you didn't make it like full on offbeat disco vibes. You're like rooting it down with the drums. Right, right. I was not expecting this bass line, I have to say. It's, uh, it's more melodic than I was expecting and yeah. a lot of offbeat. Like right. almost every offbeat's being played. That's right. That's crazy. It's also surprisingly active. Yeah. Yes. It's like it's constant. He's moving it around a lot. Yeah. Yeah, very different from what I was expecting, but it, it sounds really cool though. It's it helps it groove a lot having those all those offbeats in there. But I also loved you holding it down and then flourishes, right? Mm. In in typical Charles Bertu style. <laughs> Charles, if you could pick someone to do this after you, who would you choose? Who do you want to subject to this experiment? Hmm. I don't know if he'd be up for this, but I would love to see Davey in this in this kind of setting. Like that'd be so cool. <laughs> oh man, we challenge you, Davey. <laughs> yeah, I am here by challenging Davey. OMG, incredible! And hey, let us know too in the comments who you would like to see. Just absolutely have to go through this ringer of an experiment. We would love to know. And thank you, Charles, for doing this with us today. Of course, yeah, it's so fun. All right, we'll see you in the next one, everybody.